Hello everyone. Today we have Ben from Sarnia and he's going to tell us his story of conversion. So let's welcome Ben on Zoom and talk to him today. I'm very happy that you took this time out of your schedule to come on Zoom and share your testimony. Before we get into that, if you could just introduce yourself and a little bit about your family and your background. Well, my name's Ben Morfitt. I live here in, in Sarnia, Ontario with my wife, Rachel. I've been, I've been living here in Sarnia for around two years. I work out in a little town of Petrolia and I'm a process and automation uh, controls engineer. Originally, I'm from a, a small town called Wagashin. It's uh, a little north of, of Barrie, Ontario in Muskoka in cottage country. So it's the place everyone likes to, to vacation, but in the winter we're forgotten about. Uh, my parents are both Christians. Um, so I'm, they, they, they took me to church every week as, as many times a week as they possibly could. I never missed a meeting, they, even kicking and screaming sometimes. They always made sure I was at church. Um, and, and now looking back, I'm very thankful for that. But definitely at the time, yeah, it wasn't uh, one of my favorite things to do. You know, family with uh, three, three boys, we were pretty rambunctious. Um, we were pretty, uh, pretty active. We liked to go outside. Um, uh, we liked to fight a lot. Um, we used to, um, after, after church on, on Tuesday nights, the church that we went to there, we had what we called Tuesday night fight night. My mom would come out and yell at us, but every Tuesday night for a few years was, was Tuesday night fight night. So we, we loved getting in trouble together. We, we liked, we, we get along quite well um, now, but as kids, we definitely had our moments. Um, we also used to, being from a little further north, used to get quite, quite cold. And so in, in the winter, around March, towards the end of winter, my family would, would shove us all in a van and we'd drive down to Florida. Nice. So really enjoyed time in the heat together and um, definitely was a priority for our family to spend time together. Um, I like to cook. I like to eat what I cook, more importantly. And uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thanks, Ben. Now, what was your reaction to the gospel when you heard it the first time or first time it made sense to you? From a very early age, I was confronted with the fact that I'm a sinner. And my parents made it very, very clear to myself and my brothers that just because they were Christians and, and just because uh, we went to church and, and just because we, we read the Bible as a family did not mean that I was a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they made it very clear that, um, you know, be, being a Christian was a personal thing. It's not something you inherit from family. Um, it, it's a personal relationship with God. So I knew that, you know, I wasn't from birth. I knew that I was a sinner. I had something separating me from God. And, and initially, the, the gospel scared me. Um, the gospel scared me because, you know, I was really only focused on the negative part of the gospel. The part of the gospel that says, you know, the wages of my sin is death. And, and the punishment for, for the evil in my life is, you know, the fact that I, I would spend eternity in hell. And as a child, I was very, very uh, frightened of hell and being separated from my family. The first part, that the wages of sin is death. Now, the second part, of course, as I know, and you also know, that the gift of God, or free gift of God, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, was it easy for you to accept that? Tell, tell us a little bit, uh, you know, because you always knew that. How did you get saved? Yeah, so you're right. I, I always knew that. And I could quote that verse to you since, you know, before I can remember, I... I knew the gospel so, so well. Honestly, I, I think there was always something that I felt that I needed to do. Um, not that I was trying to, you know, be a good person to get to heaven. That, that was very clear to me from a young age that, you know, me being a good kid would never get to be in heaven. And one gospel message I would hear that, you know, there's nothing you can do to be saved. And then the next gospel message I would hear is that all you have to do is believe. Right, so I was looking at this belief as a as an action, as a verb, as a step that I had to take and that I had to, you know, somehow figure salvation out. Um, I often, it's like when you're you're young, right, and you're you're told to go to bed, and you're not tired, and you know, trying to fall asleep just keeps you awake, right? It, you, you can't. You know, I remember sitting, lying in your bed and squeezing your eyes as tight as you can. And, you know, it's not going to help you sleep, right? You need to be able to relax and, 
you know, stop thinking about the action of sleeping and just sleep. And that's what I was, I was so focused on. I used to close my eyes and say, one, two, three, I believe, and all these different things. And I would, you know, not, none of it worked. None of it made any sense. You know, coming to my parents' room weeping. Um, I can't get saved. I can't get saved. I remember at night sometimes if I couldn't sleep and I was really wrestling with, you know, knowing that I would be separated from my family and, you know, thinking the rapture had come and, and Christ had come to take all the Christians to heaven and I had been left alone and opening the door and making sure I can see my parents still breathing while they sleep and all, all these things. And ultimately, uh, there was one day, January 4th, 2002, I was uh, upstairs in, in my bedroom. We had bunk beds. And um, when I was growing up, my, my profession that I, I was going to become in the future was a spy. My, my, that was my dream job was to be a spy and I was really serious about it I you know I was really certain that that was my calling and you know I, I was going to be a spy so I used to always you know play through scenarios and kind of a very active imagination so I was trying to you know sneak around the house and do all these different things and that was kind of weird so that guy so I was on my bunk bed you know jumping down and swinging around making a huge racket and um so I'm playing through all these scenarios that I'm a spy in my head. And in one of those scenarios, you know, I, I died, right? And I, I got beat. I don't know how I couldn't beat my own imagination. But um, it, it really, you know, it's silly and it's simple. But I was a seven-year-old kid, and here I was thinking about dying. And that's not very common. And I was like, well, I, I know that if I die, number one, my biggest fear at that time was separation from my family, from my loved ones. And number two, I knew that there would be an eternity in, in hell for me. Rightfully so, because of my sin. And um, I remember putting my face in my pillow there on my bed. I still, still remember the morning. And, and the verse that came to me was John 3 and 16. A really famous, well-known verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And in, and in thinking of, of that verse, right, there's the... You know, for God so loved the world. I, I knew that God loved me. He gave his only son. I, I knew that he gave his son. Whoever believes in him. And that believing in him, it, it seemed to kind of just, finally my mind could wrap my head around that the action of belief is, is not what's going to save me. Mm -hmm. You know, me believing hard enough, me, you know, convincing myself in my own brain, okay, yep, you're good, you're good, you're good. What was going to save me was Jesus Christ, the son that was given by God. And uh, I remember simply burying my face in my pillow. I didn't say all these things aloud and, you know, um, buried my face in my pillow and I just said, thank you, God. I, I thank God for his son. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, I, I thanked him and there wasn't a, you know, heaven didn't open and angels didn't sing. Um, but there was a certain amount of peace. Uh, so yeah, at the age of seven, January 4th, 2002, I was saved. It's just, it was absolutely incredible. Um, and, and from that moment forward, I've been a Christian. You know, it's not because of my parents. It's not because of my family. It's not because of my, you know, my own actions. Right. Uh, that was one thing I think that really stumbled me. It was always about how I was feeling that day. Yeah. And some days I would feel down, so I would be more scared. And some days I would just feel to forget about it. But, you know, salvation is not a feeling. Salvation is not dependent on how I feel about myself any given day. Mm -hmm. It's about a, a fact. It's about a historical event that occurred that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died for my sins. Thank you, uh, Ben, for sharing your testimony. And uh, again, listening to you uh, describe all those uh, memories from your childhood, you know, brings back my memories as a, as a kid in India, probably doing some of those things more or less similar. Now, it's been 17 years that you've been saved. Uh, what do you enjoy the most about this relationship, about knowing God? Be, being saved really gives you such incredible hope and, and peace, regardless of external circumstances. Um, you know, like many people, there have been moments in my life where, you know, everything around me doesn't seem to really be going well, doesn't seem to be working out. There's, 
you know, problems here, problems there. And uh, but what's beautiful about Christianity is that completely separate from, you know, everything that's going on outside, everything that's going on in my life, there is a, you know, a, a steadfast anchor, right? We can read about it in the Bible. There, there's, there, there's a peace and a calm that is through Jesus Christ. And it's because, you know, my, my salvation can't be lost because of all those things that are happening. My salvation is in one person instead of Jesus Christ. But especially, you know, you look at the times we're in and all the crazy news you can read and, you know, this, the virus is doing this, the virus is doing that and through it all. And while, of course, you know, I, I'm human, there's, there's fears that, that creep in. But as a Christian, you can very easily, you know, you can, you can look in the word of God and, and see all the beautiful help that God gives to his people. Do you have any message for people who are watching this video and are with us right now. If you're not a Christian, if, if you're not saved, if you don't have, you know, assurance and hope and peace in life, and that's, that's available to you, I would encourage you not to distract yourself with anything the world has to offer. When I was younger and before I was saved, you know, you'd have these moments where you're really thinking about, you know, eternity. And, you know, what happens after we die and what's the purpose of life and why am I here and why is this happening? And all those are incredible questions, but we're very quick to, you know, ignore them and, and to drown them out and to distract ourselves with whatever, Netflix or work and all these things that some of them are very legitimate. So I would encourage people to, you know, look into resources and, and research and, you know, open the word of God and, and read what it says. And um, I truly believe stacked up against any worldview, any other religion, any other, you know, way of, you know, answering those big questions, who am I, why am I here, and where am I going? I believe that the Christian worldview and that the Bible has all the answers to that. And Christianity is not a giant blind leap of faith. It's, you know, many small steps based on fact, based on history. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. So I would encourage anyone who's searching, to not stop searching and to keep searching and to not let anything else distract them because it is the most important thing. Thank you, Ben. And uh, I can certainly agree to what you have said. Now, if anybody who's watching, if they have a question, please use the comment section below. My email address will appear right now. So you can email me as well. If you are saved and if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your savior and as your Lord, then maybe we can record your testimony and share it with the world. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks, Ben. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.